I'm joined by Chris Lee. Chris is a product manager at Dropbox and has led a product team in his previous jobs and also worked as Apple, at Apple as a project manager. Welcome, Chris. Hi. Thanks a lot for having me. Yeah, so tell us a little more about you know Dropbox. For I'm, it's a huge you know a product and application, so I'm sure most of the audience knows. But for anyone that might not know, can you tell us a little bit more about Dropbox? You know the product that you guys offer and the specific product that you work on. Sure. So uh, Dropbox is a essentially a cloud uh, storage system, um, but you know the way we like to talk about it is what we're building is the home for all of your most important stuff. Um, so it's a way for you to safely and securely store your most important files, uh, your most important photos, all in the cloud, in the Dropbox cloud, and have that accessible with you wherever you go on whatever platform you're on. Um, whether it's when you're in front of your desktop computer, on your phone, on your iPad, on your tablet, uh, through the web, uh, wherever you are, it's always there with you. Uh, and you can always know that it's safe and secure. The, the product that I work on specifically is uh, I work on all of Dropbox's Photos products. Um, and there's a lot of photos um, integration throughout all of Dropbox. For example, on the website, we have a, a tab for photos. Uh, in the mobile apps, there's also a, a Photos tab as well where you can browse uh, all the photos that you have in Dropbox. What we launched earlier this year, though, was Carousel, which is kind of our next evolution of the Photos tab. And this is a way for you to view uh, on your mobile device all of the photos that you have in Dropbox, as well as all the photos that you have locally on your device. Um, and it's a great way to keep all that you know, backed up, safe and secure in Dropbox. We automatically organize all of your photos for you. So you know, when you look through it, you can see the breakdown by places, by events. Um, it's a much, it's a much richer gallery experience. Um, you know, we try to make it a lot more engaging for you to relive all of these memories. Um, we we do some cool things around with face detection to highlight uh, and blow up the photos that have people in them. These are the people that you really care about the most, uh, like your friends and family. Mm -hmm. And then we also do some cool things around sharing. So obviously, you can share with you know Facebook, Twitter, email, SMS, what have you. But you can also share using Carousel, which is extra special because since all these photos are up in Dropbox, we can share 100 photos as quickly as we can share 10 photos. So if you were to try to share like 100 photos using email or SMS, you're going to have to wait for each one to upload one after another after another. But with Carousel, they just upload, uh, they're just shared instantly because they're already backed up to Dropbox. Yeah, that that sounds like you know a huge huge project and almost can be a, a product of its own. You know, image sharing and and there, it's kind of a a problem that a lot of uh, startups and companies you know have tried to solve. Um, and I, I'm a big fan of the the way that you guys have done it. Um, but what what about let's say you want to take a step back to like what you were doing before product management and what drove you towards uh, a career in product management. Um, sure. So I was a engineer by training at uh, UC San Diego. And, you know, through, throughout my senior year there, uh, I got to work on uh, a project where I sort of took on that uh, project product management role. And I realized that, hey, I like this, this kind of work a lot more than, I, than you know, the hardcore engineering. Um, I, I really liked working across multiple teams. I really liked, uh, you know, trying to spend a lot more time thinking about what's the vision for this product, where are we going, and how are we going to get there, versus the actual implementation of each individual piece of it. So that's kind of what led me down this path, and I was very fortunate to get a project management role at Apple right after graduating. Uh, and there I worked as a project manager for Mac OS X, uh, spent four years shipping three different releases. And that was you know, kind of my dream job. Um, my, my team was a six-person team, that managed the entire release process for this 800-person um, project. It's, it was, at the time, the largest project at Apple. So it was really a great opportunity to work extremely cross-functionally with every, every engineering team across the entire operating system, lots of other external teams as well, like marketing, support, um, operations, uh, developer relations, what have you. So that was a really cool experience. Um, after that, though, I, you know, I, I was spent a few years there and sort of got the hang of what I was doing and always wanted to 
always had an interest in business, but never really got a chance to pursue that in undergrad. So I went to business school at Wharton. While I was there, uh, I co-founded a startup with another classmate of mine and worked on that for about a year and a half in a role that was both a combination of product and engineering. This is a Meteor? That's, that's Meteor, yeah. Awesome. So after, after working on that for about a year and a half, I uh, joined Dropbox. Um, actually, there's a brief stint in there where I was working with a startup uh, called Likebrite, um, doing product work. And then after Like Bright, that's when I ended up at Dropbox. Mm -hmm. And what you know, since the since you started your own company, and uh, you mentioned that you were really attracted to the the role of a product manager because you could kind of design and craft the vision and direction of products in the company. Uh, do you what product management skills do you think there that are important uh, when you are starting your own company? What kind of skills did you really find that was very similar to what you were doing in a product management role? Uh, tons and tons of those <laughs> skills are very relevant. I think one of the most important skills is just being able to hit the ground running. Um, product management is a role that differs across companies and even across teams within companies. So you're never going to have a perfect job description of exactly what you should and shouldn't be doing every single day. So I think one of the most important skills is being adaptable and being able to figure out like where can I have the most impact right now for this product and for this team. Um, so I think a lot of that is driven by being very empathetic, being a very strong listener, and uh, being very observant of you know where you can be most effective. Where does this where does this team most need you? Um, because I think you know the best mark of success for a product manager is a product and team that's operating um, you know most effectively and successfully. It, it's really the team and the product that you're supporting. Right. What does the day to day look like at Dropbox? What does uh, you know once you get into the office at the end of the day? What do you spend your time doing? Well, you know, kind of like what I was just saying. There's no. There really is no day to day, um, and that's a big part of why I think the role is so exciting. Some days are spent um, more on like the vision and planning process for what are we trying to, what are we trying to build here? Who are we building it for? What is our roadmap for the coming months? Um, Sometimes it's focusing purely on execution in terms of how, what is this feature that we're building? Uh, why are we building it? Uh, how does it work? What are the interactions? Uh, have we user tested this? Um, how are we going to iterate on it? How are we going to A-B test this? How are we going to launch this? How are we going to tell the story of this feature to our users so that it's something that they really value and understand? Um, other days, it's working externally to the team with groups like product marketing, with legal, uh, with PR on a bunch of various issues. Um, you know, there's a lot of time spent looking internally, trying to figure out how can we improve the processes for these teams, how can we make this team move faster. Um, it it's uh, every day is a new adventure. Yeah, I, I agree, and I think that you know, with that. Uh, the fact that you are involved in so many things and things are just changing all the time, um, it's going to get frustrating at times. Uh, what, what what would you say is the most frustrating part about being a product manager? Most frustrating part about being a product manager? Um, I'd say it's the best and the worst part as well, which is, you know, as the product manager, you're kind of the DRI at the end of the day, the directly responsible individual. Mm -hmm. So... You know, there's there's a lot on your shoulders, which is really awesome because it's, you know, you can have a ton of impact, but at the same time, there's a lot of pressure because you're juggling a uh, hundred different things all at the same time, serving as sort of a hub for communication across your team. Um, and sometimes it just feels like, you know, you might be getting stretched a little thin. Right, yeah, because again, there's so many things to work on. And one thing that I found is that if you can kind of create the tools and processes in place, it really helps you stay organized and you'll know, do your job better. You know, what tools do you use on a day to day basis to help you do your job? Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're, uh, we're big users of Google Docs, and that's a great way to collaborate on feature specs that you're working on, sort of plan out schedules. Um, we have used Asana in the past for task management, although that's something we're using a little less of these days. Um, HipChat is something that we're using right now for uh, team communication. 
that's been particularly useful uh, for very active projects um, where there's just lots of discussion back and forth and sometimes email is just a little too cluttered and a little too slow. Um, Gchat for communication as well sometimes for more casual stuff. And yeah, I mean, we, we try to keep our tools pretty, pretty basic and not have too much overhead. So we're not, we're not really adding new tools every single week. Yeah, sometimes you know having too many tools can kind of get you to waste your time, you know, on on the tools rather than moving things forward. And what about like things like wireframing, creating mockups? Is that something that you are responsible for, or do you work with a designer to create those? Uh, we have incredible product designers who sort of live and breathe by that. Um, I'll jump in there occasionally when it's you know really helpful for me to do that, but most of the time it's most effective for the designers to work on that. Uh, on the product design side, uh, Sketch is a really, really awesome tool. You know, we used to be very big users of the Adobe suite, but we found that Sketch is, allows us to be a little faster. It's a little easier to use. Um, we, so we use that for static mockups. For interactive mockups, we're also using a tool called Framer.js, which is a JavaScript fr framework that allows you to build interactive prototypes. That's been really, really helpful for you know validating how how features really feel when you play with it versus trying to build it in code first, which is sounds easy but is a lot of time consuming. It is really yeah. time consuming. Sometimes. Yeah, it's definitely costly to make those changes with code rather than uh, you know something like uh, like what you guys are doing. And do you bring these kind of interactive mockups to to users and do any kind of usability testing or uh, I guess how do you interact with uh, with users on a day to day basis? So when we are building features where we do want a lot more user feedback, um, we, we do have a user research team that will help bring actual users, uh, both potential users and actual users, into the office so that we can test paper prototypes with them or interactive prototypes or actual code prototypes. Um, just sort of depends on what stage of the project we're on. Okay, gotcha. Um, what and you know one of the I think you touched on this earlier about how empathy and communication are really key uh, skills you have as a product manager. You know, for someone that's let's say just starting out as a product manager, do you have like a number one tip that you you would like to give them if they are you know working with developers or working with project managers or you know anybody that they would interact with on a day to day basis? Sure, um, I think empathy is one thing that is. You know, as I mentioned before, I think it's really, really crucial, especially as you're starting out and as you're starting to get a feel for the team. What does the team value? What do your users value? Um, and just sort of adapt your adapt your approach accordingly. You know, I, it, it's really easy to sort of get cut off from your customers, from your users. And as the product manager, you are, your job is to be the voice of the user. So. You know, if if you're not talking to your users on a very very regular basis, then who is? So, I, I think the, the, those are probably two of the most important things to keep in mind as a as a product manager. Gotcha. Yeah, in some uh, product manager roles, especially I think at smaller companies and maybe not so applicable at a larger company like Dropbox, is that the product manager is sometimes responsible for the marketing as well, or at least is a big input for the marketing team. Are you? Are you? Do you take on that role too, the product marketing aspect? Um, so we have a product marketing manager that I work very very closely with. Um, He's amazing at helping to brainstorm ideas on new ways to reach our users, on the stories that we can tell, um, and we very much collaborate on, on, on telling those stories and making sure that they're accurate, making sure that they're compelling, um, and just getting them launched uh, right alongside the product itself so that you know, when, we, when we invest all this work to put something out there, we can make sure that that actually reaches our users and resonates with users too. Can you give an example of what you what you mean by like a story? Is that like an actual story of a user using the application, or uh, what do you mean by that? Um, so when you create a feature, you can there's there's a lot of different ways to talk about that feature. Um, you can talk about what it is, what are the exact features, how does it work, um, which will help people understand how to actually use it, but. I think a more compelling way to talk about that feature is why someone would want to use it, how it's going to improve their life, how it's going to solve a problem or make their life so much better. 
Um, and I think that's, that's the story that I think is really the most compelling because that's what's going to resonate with people when you, can, when you can tell people why, not just what. Right, yeah, tell them about the, the benefits, not just come out and say the, the features because most people just want to know, like, how would this improve my life or how does this affect my life? If you are interviewing someone to join your product management team, what is something that they could either, you know, bring to the interview or uh, have on their resume that would blow you away, that would make them stand out from the pack? I think the most effective product managers are the ones that have startup experience, Um Specifically, who have started a company before, because that's really the closest. You're essentially a product manager when you're starting a brand new company, and you're doing it without any support, uh, with just usually without a lot of data, and you're just grinding it out, doing whatever it takes to ship that product and make it successful. So that's the piece that stands out the most. Um, I think that's the one that most closely mirrors what role, uh, what the role is like as a product manager. Many of the PMs that we have here at Dropbox do come from that startup background. Um, if you haven't founded a company yourself, then at least having worked at a very early stage company is also very helpful because it gives you, at a, at a small company, you're basically doing everything and anything. And it, you, you sort of get a, a certain degree of that same experience of just what it takes to launch a new product, what it's like to iterate, what it's like to not be successful in the day one, but to iterate to the point where you do become successful. Yeah, so it's... Yeah, I think when when you say some when you say that it sounds like um, it could it could sound to some some listeners that are thinking like, wow, man, I got to start my own company, you know, to get to get a job. Do you mean like a startup that is actually like you know fully funded and actually has you know a lot of users or maybe even revenue and on that end of the spectrum, or do you even mean do you even include things like uh, folks that have started projects on the side, um, you know, while they're working another job? Is that also uh, kind of attractive to a uh, a company that is hiring, looking for product manager, someone that's just like you know has side projects. It's it's a spectrum. I think on one end of the spectrum, people that have started a company, like actually from the ground up and made that successful, that's that's going to be the most attractive thing mm-hmm. uh, on a resume. If you have if you haven't done that, if you've just worked at a quote unquote corporate job and but have some side projects on the side. Yeah, that's that's definitely going to look better than someone who doesn't, mm-hmm. um, because it shows that you are. Uh, it shows that you're proactive and you're going to go out there and make something happen. Gotcha. Thanks so much, Chris. I think that that's you know a ton of actionable kind of tips for anybody out there that's just starting their first product management gig or is looking to jump into to that kind of career path. Um, so, if folks want to kind of uh, follow up with you or learn more about what you're doing. Um, what, where can they reach you? What kind of um, where can they where can they find you online? Uh, they can find me on Twitter, Lee underscore Lee L E E underscore Chris.